Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Joe Moore of the 49th Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Well, Monica, good to see you. You should tell the audience who you are. I, I'm, I'm getting right okay. to that. <laughs> this is a live and interactive show brought to you as a community service by Can TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a Can TV board member. During the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions. So if you have any questions for Alderman Moore, please call 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Well, um, I've been a, an Alderman for 23 years. Uh, I've been proud to represent that ward and very honored that uh, my constituents have uh, re-elected me on several occasions. Uh, I represent the 49th Ward, which is the Rogers Park community. And, Rogers Park is located on the far northeastern side of uh, of uh, Chicago. Now that's the 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 uh, old ward boundary, but um, and there's the new ward. Uh, we're kind of in a transition period between the uh, old ward boundaries, uh, which existed at the last election, and the new ward boundaries, which are today. But roughly, if you live in Rogers Park, except if uh, except for the far south uh, west corner of the Rogers Park community, I'm your alderman. So I border uh, Evanston's on my north. The lake is on the east. Uh, I go at one point as far west as western over by Howard Street, but primarily uh, uh, Ridge is my eastern boundary. And then Devon is my southern boundary, except uh, if you live uh, west of uh, Greenview and south of Albion, you're in another ward. You're in the 40th ward. Thank you, Alderman, on that uh, ward update. Um, Alder, Alderman, please tell us about the latest news in the, in the world. Well, uh, first, um, I want to. Uh, there may have been some people who are t tuning in to see me announce uh, uh, who the uh, who the new owner of uh, the Chicago Firehouse will be on Greenleaf Avenue. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not yet prepared to make that announcement. I thought I thought I would be able to tonight, but uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, but uh, that will happen very soon. What I'm talking about is. Um, the old uh, firehouse located on Greenleaf Avenue, uh, just east of Clark Street. Um, uh, a few years ago, the fire department uh, moved to a new location, a new building on Clark Street uh, north of Tui. Uh, and uh, I was able to receive a commitment from, uh, after being told by the Daly administration that we'd have to sell it on the open market to the highest bidder, uh, the manual administration uh, allowed me to have a community process and have uh, the community uh, working with my zoning and land use advisory committee uh, decide uh, how the future of the firehouse because we were all very concerned about preserving the building and we had three very exciting finalists um, uh, the, the uh, um, uh, uh, north side community resources which was uh, originally uh, known as the Rogers Park Community Council, um, uh, ISCON, which are, are commonly referred to as the Hare Krishna Temple, also uh, made a proposal uh, that uh, was one of the final proposals, and uh, uh, two gentlemen, um, Andrews Vance, who are uh, looking uh, to uh, transform it into uh, their personal residence as well as a um, a, uh, a, a a clinic for. Um, uh, Mr. Vance's um, uh, patients. He, he's a, um, a therapist. Yeah. So um, uh, those are the, th the three proposals, and uh, we had a community meeting, several community meetings on it uh, over the winter, and then since then, my zoning advisory committee and I have been kind of working on um, uh, coming up with a final uh, a list of finalists. We're very close to announcing who the uh, the winner is, so to speak. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, so I apologize for folks who may be tuning in expecting me to make the announcement. I'm not quite there yet. Uh, so other than that, um, things are going wonderfully. Um, uh, we've had uh, for the you know we've had a um, a very successful participatory budgeting election. Now participatory budgeting is the process where uh, I dis uh, I turn the power over to the community over deciding how to spend the $1.3 million discretionary budget that each alderman gets uh, to spend on capital projects in the community. Uh, rather than me deciding, I turn it over to the community in a process where community members come up with uh, proposals for how to spend the money, and then those uh, proposals are vetted and 
and, and finalized it and brought to the entire ward for a community-wide vote. Anyone in my, who lives in my ward who's age 16 years of, or older uh, can vote regardless of uh, regis voter registration status or regardless of citizenship status. All you have to do is be a resident of the ward. And we had the election a few weeks ago, uh, and the voters decided to spend about 69% uh, of that budget, 690000 of the million dollars I put up through this process, for street resurfacing. Obviously a real cry need, not only in our neighborhood, but throughout the city. And then in the remaining amount of money, they, they decided on some very ex kind of exciting projects. We've got um, new bus benches and uh, benches for, for bus stops throughout the ward, particularly a need for our senior citizens. Mm. We have a um, uh, we have a new water feature, a water spray uh, that will be constructed in Potawatomi Park. That was another one of the proposals approved by the voters. Uh, Handicapped access ramps uh, uh, on uh, at uh, Hardigan Beach along Albion in the lake, where if you have a wheelchair or you're a mother with a stroller, uh, you can access the water uh, and uh, from from the park to to the waterfront through this ramp. So uh, really neat neat projects. And then finally, uh, carpeting, much needed carpeting for the Rogers Park Library. That was another project proposal that was approved by the voters. Uh, it's a process that has gained na national recognition, international recognition, in mm. fact. Um, I've had the opportunity to um, uh, speak on it and, and uh, speak on our process in Brazil and in France and, the, and, and UK, as well as other parts of the, of the country. And it's, I'm happy to report that uh, New York City is emulating our this practice. San Francisco, there's some districts in San Francisco that are. Uh, the city of Vallejo, California, a couple of city council members in St. Louis. So it's it's gone, it's it's starting to go viral, but it started right in the 49th Ward. We were the first political jurisdiction in the country to do it five years ago, uh, and it's proven very successful and very popular. So that's a you know that's another really exciting initiative that's that's happened in in the community. Congratulations on that, Alderman. Um, and tell us about the timetable for the new Jewel Osco. Yep, that was a uh, another exciting uh, uh, development uh, for us. Uh, uh, everyone was quite surprised uh, last fall when the Dominic's, uh, the Dominic's food chain, announced that they were pulling out of Chicago. Uh, Safeway, the parent company of Dominic's, uh, were leaving the Chicago area market, and that left several Dominic's uh, in my around my community uh, vacant. Uh, including the one that's in the 49th Ward at uh, at uh, Gateway Shopping Center. Uh, and uh, this was a critical uh, location. Uh, when that store opened in 1999, it brought to Rogers Park uh, a full-service grocery store that we had been without, left without for several years. Uh, ironically, it was Jewel Food Store who closed their Jewel store on Morse Avenue in about 20 years ago that left us without a full-service food store. Uh, Dominic's filled the void. And then, of course, when they closed, there's a great amount of concern in the community. Uh, I worked very closely with, um, with uh, Emanuel administration. Uh, I was appointed to a task force to help uh, find grocery store options, not only in my community, uh, but, but other communities. And um, I'm proud to say that uh, with a little bit of arm twisting on the part of our, our deputy mayor, Steve Koch, uh, he was able to convince um, Jewel Osco to uh, open uh, in the uh, Gateway Shopping Center. Uh, so uh, right now they're looking. I just spoke with Jewel today. They were at my job fair. We had a job fair today. We had over uh, close to 500 people come to my job fair looking for work and meeting with potential employers. And one of those potential employers was Jewel Osco. Uh, and they're telling me that they're looking at uh, late June, early July for an opening at the Gateway Center. So it'll be good. We're going to bring uh, over 400 jobs to my community at that store alone. Um, and they've had, uh, they tell me they've had uh, uh, about 1,500 applications uh, for jobs. So uh, fortunately, though, that's, uh, uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, 400 people get jobs and 1,100 people won't necessarily because uh, they're also looking uh, to fill some of their other stores that they're opening in Chicago. Okay. Thank you for the employment update and economic yeah. development. Um, I do believe we have a caller on the line. 
Hey, I'm really intrigued by this idea of participatory uh, budgeting. I was hoping maybe you could share a little bit more about, like, so how exactly did it work? Could anyone in the community propose an idea? And then when with the actual voting, was it, like, um, kind of a special election where people came in? And, like, how did that process work? And did you, like, work with any sort of third parties to sort of make Sure, it? sure. Uh, the process is, it's, it's really pretty much a year-long process. It, it begins with uh, it, every fall we have uh, meetings in about uh, six different areas of my, of my ward. We also have a meeting in, in Spanish because we have a large Spanish-speaking population in my community. And we talk about what participatory budgeting is. Uh, we explain uh, about my million-dollar budget that I have to spend on capital projects, explain what you can use the money for. Uh, it's for capital uh, budget needs, in other words, infrastructure. Uh, you can't use it to hire more police officers or more teachers or things or provide services, but you can use it for new street lights, new sidewalks, uh, new curbs and gutters, uh, uh, improvements to public buildings, um, uh, some of the projects that I talked about earlier today. And then we ask for volunteers. Uh, we call them community representatives. It's a self-selected group, anyone who's interested in participating. So we usually get around 60 to 80 people to volunteer, and then they go out and come up with project ideas themselves, or they use uh, ideas that have been submitted to my office over the course of the year, or um, ideas that uh, are brought up in the brainstorming sessions we have at this initial round of meetings. And so from that point forward in the late fall into early spring, uh, the community representatives meet in committees to come up with project proposals and ideas. And they research the proposals. They find out how much they cost. They kind of talk with their neighbors to determine if it has any popularity. Uh, and, and then we return to the community for a couple of what we call um, uh, expos, project expos, in, uh, in the, in the uh, early to mid-spring, where the community representatives bring forth their ideas, uh, get feedback from the community members present at these meetings, fine-tune those proposals, and then prepare them to go on an election ballot. And then for uh, a week at the end of April, beginning of May, uh, we have our election. Uh, we do early voting, where we go out in the community and, and go at uh, L stations, in front of grocery stores, at schools, uh, at senior homes, uh, and and get people to vote uh, and tell them about the projects. We also have a, an actual election day that's held at the Chicago Math and Science Academy every year uh, where people can come on election day to vote, and we also have voting in my, uh, in my ward office. And another th really cool thing we had this year is for the first time we had electronic voting. Before we used paper ballots, uh, this time we gave uh, voters the option of using, if, uh, at least on election day or if they voted in my office, uh, the uh, option of voting on a computer. Oh. And, and it was really neat because it, 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 it really helped explain to the voters what projects they were, they were uh, uh, voting on and you know, showing on a map where they were located, a picture of the project that was being proposed. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was really neat. And that was uh, Berkeley, uh, University of California at Berkeley, who contacted me and said they they heard about the process. Actually, they I met one of the representatives when I was at a conference in, uh, at the Council of Europe in, in, in Strasbourg, France, and they were so taken with it that they decided they wanted to do an electronic voting. And my hope is that one day we can use that to actually give people the option, if they desire, to vote online. We're not there yet because we have to figure out a way of making that voting secure and only ensuring that people vote only vote once and that they are res residents of the ward. Uh, but it is something that ultimately I'd like to do. It's also a great tool to help people discuss the projects and everything. So that's basically it. And then anyone can vote. Uh, as long as you live in the ward and you're 16 years of age or older. Uh, you don't have to be a registered voter. You don't have to be a citizen. All you have to be is a resident of of the of the 49th ward. And, and and, 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 and citizenship for us is a little bit more than the, the technical citizenship that you read about in civic books. It's, it's being a, 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 a member of the community. That to us is a citizen. And people, even if, you're, if you don't have papers that show you being a U.S. citizen, you still pay taxes. You still 
uh, send your kids to the local schools, you still live in our community, you should be allowed to have a say in how that some of those tax dollars are spent. Thank you, Alderman. We have another call on the line. Oh, caller, what is your question? Hi, right, thanks for taking my question. Yeah, uh, my question is in regards to um, the biking situation. Yes. Are we going to have more biking routes, and are we going to have a Divi bike share program? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a... Uh, we've all already seen Divi beginning to expand in the 49th Ward, um, uh, uh, and I would urge everyone if they want to find if they are a ward resident or even if they're not and they just want to find out what's going on in the neatest community in Chicago, uh, sign up for my electronic newsletter at ward49.com. You go to that uh, home the the home page of my website at the top of that page. You can sign up for my electronic newsletter. Reason I say that is because we've had some. Uh, news recently, uh, Divi is expanding to Rogers Park. Um, we are getting Divi bikes stations uh, uh, that will be rolling out this, uh, this, this year. Um, and uh, also we have uh, uh, been working with the C city's Department of Transportation and the um, uh, Active Transit Alliance at, at uh, establishing more bike routes in, in our, our neighborhood. Thanks to participatory budgeting, we've already demarcated a lot of bike routes in the ward. We're going to bring more. We want to make uh, our ward very bike friendly, uh, safe for bicyclists and motor motorists alike. And so uh, uh, if you want to get involved, we do have a committee that's being formed to look at, uh, uh, at where the bike routes could go, what's the best, safest way to traverse my ward. Um, you know, we don't have a lakefront bike route, so people have to to traverse the, the side streets, and we want to find out the safest route for that. And there's been a lot of spirited discussion in my community exactly what street should we use. Should we go up Glenwood? Should we go up Greenview? Uh, and so those are the things we're going to be, be talking about. Everyone can participate. Everyone can help us reach that decision. Uh, so if the caller lives in my neighborhood or likes to bike through Rogers Park, please participate in that committee. Sign up for my electronic newsletter. Contact my office. Uh, and um, and we'll put you on the, on the committee. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Yes, good evening. Good evening. First of all, a hats off for helping to get Pratt uh, Boulevard uh, paved between Clark and uh, Sheridan. That's Thank a, goodness. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, but I have another question concerning uh, roads. Um, I have uh, my kids go to Lakeshore Schools, and so Greenview Avenue, which uh, right now looking at your uh, PDF from your website, it's not identified and prioritized as a street that needs to be paved, but with uh, Sullivan High School, Kilmer Elementary, and with uh, Lake, uh, Lakeshore Schools, that road is, is really, it's almost like Pratt was last year. It's filled with puddles. How do we get that street on that list to get prioritized? To get well, uh, first of all, short term, we are going to get those potholes filled. Uh, I, 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 we've got the city filling, had been in the neighborhood, a lot of our streets and potholes have been filled. Uh, that street hasn't been. I just made a mental note to myself today as I was tr traveling north on Greenview. Uh, I assume particularly right just north and south of Pratt's where it's the worst. And we got to get that taken care of in the near term. Uh, farther down the road in terms of resurfacing, uh, we are going to be resurfaced. You're going to see a lot of streets resurfaced in the 49th Ward this, this summer. Uh, why is that? Because we've had a backlog. We've had a backlog because, as you know, People's gas has been in the neighborhood, tearing up our streets, laying new gas mains. Wonderful. It's good to have, we're going to have new gas mains throughout the entire ward, but it's been a real inconvenience for the last few years. And, of course, we haven't wanted to resurface streets until people's gas was done. Because the last thing you want to do is spend the, you know, the uh, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 it takes to, to resurface a, a residential block spend that money only to have the gas company come in and tear that road up again. So we've held off, but we have a lot of money that we haven't spent um, and a lot of streets that are, are going to be online to be resurfaced. I don't have the list in front of me, but I would be very, very surprised if Greenview weren't, wasn't on that list. And hopefully we're going to get it done uh, this summer. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Hi, Alderman. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask about... Um, a recent situation in, in Chicago pertaining to uh, the city's principals having, I guess, some sort of concerns about the manual administration and their thoughts and their feelings being heard in terms of the way that they govern their schools. 
and I understand that it's recently become, you know, national news with the New York Times and the Washington Post picking up the story as recently as today. And I just wanted to know if you've been following the situation, if you can sort of better explain the concerns that the principals are having, and if you had any thoughts on sort of this ongoing um, dispute between the two entities. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I tell you the truth, I haven't been following that particular principal's concern. Um, uh, because uh, he's actually in a, a school in a ward south of mine. Uh, but I do work very closely with the principals in my, in my ward, uh, and I will ha uh, hasten to add, we have really good principals. I, you know, I indicated at the beginning I've been alderman for a long time. Uh, probably the, the greatest number of really good principals uh, in my ward at every, any point before. Uh, just last Sunday, uh, we had a forum on the public schools uh, at Sullivan High School, which is in my ward, uh, and uh, attended by community residents, parents, local school council members. Uh, there's a new organization forming that I'm very supportive of uh, that, um, uh, that sponsored the forum, uh, and a number of the, pr the principals attended. Uh, so to me, uh, as an alderman, uh, my main concern are the schools in my community. And I have seen witness firsthand uh, the importance that a principal can have on a school. They're clearly, and there's, if you can point to one single factor that is critical to the success of a school, it is the, the principal in that leadership role. Uh, and so um, I, I would take uh, any concerns expressed by any principal especially the one I believe was a Lakeview High School principal, if I'm not mistaken, who had expressed some concerns about not being listened to uh, downtown at City Hall. I know as the alderman up here, whenever a principal comes to me and expresses concern, I make, I make calls to the regional office. Um, I just, we just had a meeting with Barbara Bird Bennett, the superintendent of schools. I share with her uh, directly some concerns I had with Gale School in my community and about some of the serious budget cuts they're undergoing. Uh, so uh, we're busy advocating for those schools as well. Clearly, when you have a, a bureaucracy that has that oversees over 600 schools, as the Chicago public school system has, there's going to be some communication problems. I think the role of an alderman is to open the lines of communication because the bottom line is everyone wants the same goal. They want good schools. They want students who will learn. They want students who are successful. Uh, I think there's some differences in how we achieve those goals, uh, but one way of addressing those differences is to keep the lines of communication open. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Is there any final words you'd like well, to say? Well, I want to make sure we cover everything I promised we would cover. Uh, I think the, uh, the one thing, yeah, one thing I do want to uh, point out is, uh, you know, we've, we've had, we have had over the last few months a uptick, a little uptick in violence in the community. I know a lot of people live in my neighborhood are concerned about the, the shootings that have occurred. Uh, fortunately, knock on wood, uh, we've, we haven't had any incidents in the last uh, uh, several weeks. We're very fortunate to have a police commander, uh, Commander Tom Waldera, who has been very proactive in addressing those concerns uh, and, and making sure that we have the resources we need. Uh, we've, I think we've been able to stem the violence that arises out of a, 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 a gang conflict in, in my community. Uh, but we also recognize it takes more than just police work. It takes community involvement. It takes finding people jobs. You know, and that's one of the reasons I sponsored the job fair today uh, that was attended by over 400 people. Um, and, uh, and why I worked really hard at getting a Jewel food store here and worked really hard to guarantee that the Jewel will hire from the community. Uh, they were at my job fair. They had the store open for two weeks to, to, um, uh, to, to get people right in the community to apply. So we got to do a multifaceted effort at, at tackling violence. It's jobs, it's recreational activities to keep kids off the street. We've been promoting that. And of course, it's effective policing. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate, I always appreciate being here. It uh, provides a wonderful opportunity for me to, to uh, you know, address uh, my constituents in their living room. Uh, and I appreciate the people who called, and I appreciate the people who've watched the show tonight. And 
uh, know that I, am, I try to be as accessible as possible. Uh, look me up on Facebook, on every block, on Nextdoor, and of course on my electronic newsletter and my Facebook and my uh, website. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you, callers, for your uh, comments and questions. Our telephone technician for today has been Steve. Please join us for another edition next Wednesday of Political Forum. Have a good evening. Good night.